Hey guys, welcome to the Learn Feng Shui podcast, where you'll learn feng shui from a classical point of view, taking out the myth and superstition. So if you're interested in learning feng shui, Chinese astrology, all things Chinese metaphysics, as well as the superstitions and myths that connect it all, you'll enjoy learning feng shui with me. Hey guys, let's get into the energy update for December. Let's see what the month has in store for us feng shui wise and which zodiac signs are most impacted. Bringing in the month of the rat, starting us off here is the first solar cycle of energy called greater snow, the Jeshi cycle. Um, it starts on December 7th and goes through the 21st. And it is a time of year where we start to see some snowfall maybe. And uh, December 22nd through January 1st is the winter solstice. And of course, we'll talk about the solar terms at the end of the episode and what we can do to stay healthy during this time. So guys, December, can't believe it's already here. Oh my goodness, the year's going by so fast. So before though, we get to the end of the year and everything that that entails, which will be here probably before we can blink. <laughs> um, let's, you know, shut this year out. Let's experience this time. I really feel like this is the beginning of something new, which uh, we'll talk about in just a second. So the month we do experience, of course, the shortest days and longest nights up to the winter solstice and the yin energy is overtaking the yang energy. And of course, it's kind of reflected in seeing more dark than light in our days. We know those nights are very long. And of course, in the winter solstice, we do have the longest night of the, the year. So it does seem to be a time where we collectively decide to slow down and reflect inward and it's kind of reflected in the dormancy of nature. Everything's kind of slowing down, you know. The wood rat, however, is the very first in the cycle of the 60 zodiac signs. And it does symbolize new beginnings and growth. So if we look at the water element with wood sitting on top, it's like a tree planted by a stream. There's this never ending resource, right? And we can kind of look at internal growth and inner reflection being supported this time of year. It's also a good month for, of course, those new beginnings, making a change, planning for 2024. Um, you can use your Xing Qi or your life generating direction to brainstorm work. Think of new ideas, you know, if you need a little bit of a breakthrough. It's a good, it's really just a good time to do that. You know, it's just that time of year where new things are happening, you know, symbolizing that new cycle, new beginnings. Um, so I really do think that is very symbolic of what we'll experience this month. And of course, not everyone experiences it the same way because our energy is different. Our personal energy is different. However, if you are ready for a change, ready for a new beginning, you know, think it's a good month to think about how you can start making that happen. You know, remember things don't happen, you know, to us, right? They're, they're not, we, we can control what happens. And so, um, although things do happen that are out of our control, we can control how we react to it. And if we feel like we've been a little bit stagnant, you know, you don't wait for things to come to you. Sometimes you gotta take that first step and sometimes just kind of that brainstorming thinking, um, having a little bit of a, you know, a mind session where you're like, okay, let me, you know, how can I solve this problem? Whatever, you know, uh, using that uh, life generating um, direction in eight mansions, it really can help you to kind of think of some new ideas. Remember, it's a thinking direction. So yeah, feel free to try to use that. Uh, let's get on to the Zodiac forecast. All right, guys, remember when we look at the zodiac signs, I only look at the signs that combine with the zodiac sign that is present for the month. So I mentioned earlier, of course, that December is the month of the rat. Uh, if you're new to Botsa, if you're new to Eastern astrology, you have four zodiac signs. Most people are really familiar with the year they're born. You know, if you go to a Chinese restaurant, you look at those placemats, you may know you're born the year of the monkey or the year of the dragon, right? And so you actually have a zodiac sign for the year, month, day, and hour you are born. And these are called your four pillars, your Botsa, or sometimes called the eight characters. And it's because you have four different uh, pillars there, one for the year, month, day, and hour. The year represents your social circle, community, and friends. 
The month represents your career and parental relationships sometimes. Health can be impacted uh, when there is some sort of combination or clash there. The day uh, represents your health, your relationship, how you see yourself, kind of who you truly are as a person, uh, how you relate to your partner. And the hour represents your thoughts, feelings, emotion, your relationship with your children. And if you are the boss at your work, if you have uh, people underneath you, of your your downline okay so it represents uh, your subordinates okay so here we go uh the rat so um if, let's give an example real quick if you have a rat in your your year for example you're born in the year of the rat um this month you can look for that to impact maybe your social circle friends and community around you okay so that's kind of how that works yeah you get it all right guys so looking first at the rat the energy that is governing the month you know i kind of talk about very frequently kind of stays on my blog post that it can look feel more stressful maybe you'll feel more visible or seen because you have the grand duke for the month so uh, make choices carefully during these times and look for the shinshaw stars to help guide you uh, and guide your focus and so really one of the most notable ones that i noticed or i thought about when looking back through that system of symbolic stars is the red matchmaker and the salty pool. So it could be a possible love match, but be cautious because it could be a short term flirty fling. So if you're married, please be connecting and focused on your partner because you can, um, you know, make that, uh, you know, work in your favor, kind of connect with your partner a little bit. If you're married, don't be, you know, flirting with other people, <laughs> you know, just, just, uh, if you're, if you're, uh, not, uh, if you're taken, you know, if you're not single, then, you know, keep that to your partner, but yeah, it could be a good month for you to connect with your partner. Or if you are single and you're looking um, it could be a time where you uh, maybe you can find a holiday date, but usually the salty pool does indicate a shorter term relationship, usually a fling. So, hey, if you're ready for that this month, enjoy it. All right, combining, usually these are called three harmony combinations. Uh, the monkey and the dragon do make the three harmony combination to the rat. So if you have a monkey or dragon, the presence of the rat will um, come in and form a partial combination, you know, so if you don't have a rat in your zodiac, uh, you won't see that combination until the rat comes in, if that makes sense. Okay. So the monkey uh, may feel more supported this month. If you feel a little bit stressed or overwhelmed, look for a mentor or parental figure to talk to. Sometimes we all need a little nurturing. If you have the dragon, look for hidden opportunities. Sometimes we have to make our own opportunities, but other times we have to be ready to grab as soon as the opportunity presents itself. Sometimes volunteering yourself can open you up for things up later. You know, we might think that we're um, just volunteering, you know, oh, it's a volunteer thing. I'm not going to get paid or, you know, I'm just wasting my time. But remember that whenever you volunteer your time and you're helping somebody out, you know, um, if you think of, you know, something being reciprocal, you know, just think of it as, hey, if I help somebody out, then <laughs> uh, that means they may owe me, you know, uh, but on the other side, too, you don't want to expect anything. But remember that sometimes volunteering, um, it just it's one of those things where it, it gets people, you know, thinking about you. They know that you're open to helping and um, it could open up opportunities for you later on you know um, of course don't volunteer all your time and take time away from yourself and only do it if you feel like you have the time for it um, of course this month I know I always used to love to take my kids during the holiday to volunteer at like food kitchens and stuff like that because I always felt like I wanted them to understand you know not everybody is as blessed as us and if we can serve then you know be of service especially during the holiday season so if you have an ox in your zodiac, sometimes this is called the secret friend, usually referred to as the harmony. And the sign of the rat does help bring the ox some ability to make connection. So December is typically a time to slow down and connect and spend some time with your family and friends. So do find some time to do some holiday activities and enjoy yourself if you're born under the sign of the ox. It could help also you feel a little bit more stable for the month if you felt a little ungrounded. Um, usually the ox, I think typically 
it stays pretty grounded just because you are that earth energy and of course combining with the rat can add some of that extra stability for you so just take the time to connect this month a seasonal combination means that the zodiac signs that make up the season of winter are they're going to be pig rat and ox so if you have the ox or the pig you will have the seasonal combination and it is the strongest out of all the combinations and it combines to form the element of water and so the presence of all of these together just means you can have a very strong water element so remember that water is not necessarily beneficial to everybody and so it's hard to say that if you have the the ox and the pig that you're going to have this automatic you know amazing month um not necessarily you know and it's not going to be necessarily bad either but uh, what I would consider, though, is the presence of a lot of water energy can make you feel a bit stressed and sometimes unstable. So, um, you know, enjoy your month. Make sure you are also grounding yourself, you know, and that you are just kind of taking that time to, uh, you know, to take some of that stress away. Uh, remember that the seasonal combination does come with some opportunity and sometimes opportunity can create some stress, you know, especially when we're doing a whole lot. So again, just kind of take the time this month um, if you feel stressed out just to kind of uh, ground yourself, do some breathing. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a whole meditation thing. I'm, I, I don't, I'm not a meditator. And so what I need to do when I feel a little bit stressed out really is just take a second to um, breathe. I usually take a second to breathe, do deep breathing and, um, just kind of walk away for a second. You know, if I feel like something is not working for me, walking away for a few minutes will help. And then you'll be able to kind of clear your mind and then make some progress. Everybody wants to know about the clashing energy that comes up for the month. So the clashing energy is a zodiac sign that directly opposes the governing energy of the month. And so this month it's the rat as the governing energy and it's a water element and the opposing energy is the horse and it's a fire element so it creates that uh, fire water clash um, remember that when you see a clash it's not always necessarily bad um, most uh, so i will tell you true clashes don't occur very often if you have any of the other combining signs the monkey the dragon the ox or any of those seasonal zodiac like the pig you're actually not going to experience the clash. The, the combining energy takes a clash away. And a lot of times the combining energy will create more, uh, ev an ev more of an eventful time <laughs> than the clashing energy and it, because a lot of stuff is combining together. Okay. And so I know I'm in the middle of taking my uh, BATSA classes again. Uh, we started back up with our study group. And so I'm just kind of reviewing everything. I love to, to kind of get insight where I hadn't got insight before. And that is one of the things that it always strikes me. So a lot of people are worried about that clash, but Again, it's not always a clashing energy that can be the most impactful and a true clash doesn't occur very often. So don't be too worried about it. But remember um, that since water can put out fire, it can mean maybe you feel defeated, maybe you feel stressed out, maybe you feel pressure. But, you know, change is usually in store when you see a clashing energy. So if you create a change for yourself, usually that takes away the clash also. Let's take a look at flying stars for the month of December. All right, guys, some of these sectors are a little bit challenging for the month. And so we have some that are just kind of neutral. They're not going to do much uh, unusable, you know, just kind of keep quiet. And there's a couple that are good. And there's a couple that we really want to have those, those are red flags are flying for. Okay. So the Southwest, or if you're a Gua 2, you do have a one four flying star combination. And um, that could mean a good month for studying in the sector, you know, quite good, not, not too bad. You know, if you're single and looking for love, you can actually place a bamboo in water or a plant that sets in water in that sector for the month and try to make some love matches and go on some dates. So that could be quite good. And again, um, the four star is for academic pursuit. So if you need a little bit of a boost or if your student student needs a little bit of a boost to finish out their finals for uh, the break, you know, before uh, Christmas break here, then um, set them in the Southwest. You place a little fan there. Um, yeah. 
And so take advantage of those flying stars this month. At the Northeast, so if you're a Gua 8, the number one flying star visits for the month, making it a 1-7 combination. This shows us that we have the ability to connect with others if we use that sector. So use the sector for marketing, sending emails, general work. Uh, if you think of the the just the 1-7, it really does represent um, the ability to communicate and speak with somebody. So if you're needing to communicate, speak, if you have any kind of public things going on, um, you know, write a speech there. Uh, stuff like that. So definitely good for talking. And of course, um, you can work there. I, so I don't think I'd recommend putting um, a fan there for the time being, but yeah, working in the sector should be quite uh, useful. Some of the neutral sectors for the month, I really didn't put this on the blog. So if you're listening, you get to uh, get a nice little a little listen. Okay, so Northwest, you know, has that eight wealth star, but we can't use it because we do. It does have that five a disaster star there for the month. That 8-5 combination usually can indicate a loss of some sort of economic, you know, you don't want to lose your wealth. You don't want your wealth to be impacted. So, um, yeah, d just keep the Northwest quiet for the month. Should be quite okay. Uh, not not too big a deal there. Um, the 6 Lux star is moving to the southeast. That's just kind of a neutral sector uh you know, not, not too big a deal. One thing they say to be careful is injury to your legs. If that's, if that's the case there. Um, so if you're sleeping in that sector, kind of just be cautious of that. And then the number three in the North, you know, we don't really want to mess with that. It does, uh, come into, uh, the com combines with the flying star nine, uh, for the month. So, um, but not too impactful and should be quite fine. Um, you know, but keep the area quiet and remove anything that's overly activating the area to avoid um, arguing. So that's if you are in the north or if you're a Gua 1. And there is two areas we really want to take note of for this month. Flying star combination in the east. So uh, if you're a Gua 3, also take caution. The presence of the five star is there. And of course, this does combine with the yearly star number two, which is considered an illness star. So you're going to want to cure the area, um, keep it quiet. You know, you could put your salt water cure. You can place some metal objects there. I don't love to put metal in the east because you don't want to put metal in wood energy, a uh, kind of, you know, it clashes each other. So you don't really want to put metal. You can place the metal coins there, the six metal coin charm. But I really, the one I recommend the most is placing a saltwater cure. And you can place that um, anytime from now and leave it up until January 5th. And the south is another kind of a red flag here. It's, you know, the Gua 9. Um, if so, if you're a Gua 9 individual, yearly number eight flying star does come out with a monthly number two and it can indicate some financial issues if you're a gua nine if it falls at your front door or your bedroom you can cure with a salt water jar and remember this energy moves in on the seventh so as i'm putting this out it should be uh you know just in time in addition to our yearly no renovation sectors which are the south southwest west and northwest and of course the east, which has that yearly Grand Duke. We're going to want to avoid renovations in the north, which has the monthly Grand Duke or the Thai Soy. And of course you can check those out on my blog, which is linked below. All right, guys, let's go ahead and go to our Folklore Friday segment. We're going to be talking about those solar cycles of energy, what that uh, month is going to bring us, you know, what to expect and how to stay healthy during that time. So I know we're kind of winding down for the holidays. Uh, one thing I wanted to share with you is that I heard somebody the other day say, uh, if you take January 8th off, you have the possibility to of having four three-day weekends in a row. So January, uh, sorry, December 25th, Christmas and New Year's Day both fall on a Monday. So we'll have a three-day weekend that week. But if you take the 8th off, you can have that as a three-day weekend. And then the next weekend is the 15th, which is Martin Luther King Day and, of course, the federal holiday. So you can possibly get uh, four three-day weekends in a row over the next few weeks there. So a little pro tip, maybe you need to recoup time after the holidays. Maybe you want to take it a little bit slower. You're just, you know, dragging because it's so cold outside. 
um, yeah, consider cashing in one of your sick days or putting in some time off for the eighth <laughs> and get your extra three day weekend in there. <laughs> the pro tip. Um, yeah, winding down for the holidays. I know um, one thing I'm doing to get through is taking my Magic Mind productivity shot. I feel like I hit that midday slump about three o'clock maybe. And so I've been doing um, about two o'clock, taking the productivity shot about then. Uh, that way it kind of negates. And it really has helped with the energy slump that I experience. And that's um, caffeine from the matcha tea. I really do feel like it also doesn't take my sleepiness away. So um, in regards to like, you know, I love to go to bed this time of year. It's dark at 530 because of the daylight savings time. And um, it, of course, you know, we have these long nights. And so 6 p.m., I'm ready to go lay in bed. And so, you know, there's definitely a difference between the groggy sleepy and just feeling lazy sleepy. And I do feel like it doesn't take away that you know, going to bed early factor. And so, um, it's supposed to be a long extended, but it's not, um, the type of energy where it's like, you feel like you can't go to bed, you know, at night. So I really like that. And of course, um, one other thing that I've, I've kind of been considering too, is that I'm kind of going through that time of life where you experience what's called the change of life. <laughs> you know, most of my audience is female and, and can probably definitely relate, you know, to, um, you know, those premenopausal symptoms, which are brain fogginess, the mental fatigue. And I do feel like over the past maybe year, I've really experienced strange hormonal symptoms. And so I'm really hoping that, you know, that mushroom supplement that is in the Magic Mind, the Lion's Mane and the Cordyceps Mushroom, um, they're both supposed to help with that cognitive function. Also inflammation. I have inflammation issues, so I'm hoping it'll kind of help with that. I think I need to take it longer term to kind of determine, but I do feel like it helps with that mental clarity. Um, and even if you just have those energies, um, not really energy slumps, but those mental slumps where you're like, I just, I can't think I'm so mentally tired. I definitely feel like it helps with that. And I feel like um, us as women, we experience that more just because we have such a big mental load on us, you know? And so really hoping it helps with those brain function <laughs> and those cognitive uh, symptoms that I experience. So yeah, if you experience that too, you want to check it out, go to magicmind.com slash feng shui. Use code feng shui 20 for up to 56% off of your first subscription, 20% off of your one-time purchase. That's code feng shui 20. Highly recommend it. Of course, um, if you're going to, uh, you know, have be having to do stuff for the, you know, your holiday season, having to run around and be busy and get all your shopping done, you know, do all the stuff. I kind of talked about this last week too. Do, do your mom stuff, you know. Highly recommend Magic Mind. Who is today's show sponsor? Magicmind.com backslash feng shui using code feng shui 20 for that discount. All right, guys, let's go ahead and go to the next segment. All right, so looking at the Jechi cycles for the month here, I'm uh, switching it up just a little bit. I'm actually reading from the asianmedicine.org website, which I'll link to below. Um, we, of course, you know, we want to look at what's going on in the season, but we also want to know how to stay healthy during this time. And I think, of course, when we look at those Jechi cycles, it does tell us what we can do to kind of stay healthy this time of year. So it states here that it is the last seasonal node or last cycle before the winter solstice, the micro season. The seasonal node, as it uh, is called here, represents the final stage of the most yin energy time of the year, symbolized by the tidal hexagram of Kun, which is Earth. It's composed entirely of broken lines and does represent the most yin you can get, you know, if you do the Yi Jing. And so, Again, just kind of symbolizing that yin overtaking the yang. It's the most yin time of year. Everything's dormant. It's cold. And greater snow is the time when we start seeing snowfall. So especially if you're in the northern states, we actually haven't been super cold in Texas. So I don't know. They're still predicting a super cold winter. But uh, we'll see, you know, we'll see. 
And uh, here it does say weather is cold and dry and the days are getting shorter before we transition to the birth of the yang energy represented by the solstice. So if you know, of course, on the solstice, we have the longest night of the year. And after that, the yang energy changes and it does uh, start, you know, building. And of course, we build up to the longest day of the year represented by the summer solstice. And then we switch again and that's in infinitum <laughs> for the rest of you know the existence of the world you know anyhow uh, the ancient chinese character for winter is called dong and its image is of the sun locked in an inverted bottle at this dark time of year it feels as though the sun has been locked away the main way to guard our health in this period of time is to focus on warm supplementation while at the same time trying to avoid exposure to cold. And it says here, thus the Nijing, which I had to look up, it's a text on Chinese medicine, tells us that in the winter it's appropriate to avoid cold and seek warmth. Along the lines, we continue to practice preventative moxibustion. So moxibustion is actually a form of like smoke. So you would blow... Um, it's almost like this incense or the smoke that you will put in certain areas of your body that's supposed to keep you warm. And it does kind of point here that there's certain points in the body where you're supposed to do that. If you know Chinese medicine, uh, we they usually look at acupuncture uh, points, you know, those, um, I know there's meridian points within your body. And so another guideline tells us to nourish the yin. While it may seem counterintuitive for the cold time of year, the meaning of yin also refers to the body's ability to store and thereby regenerate in its vitality. So yin means being able to be in a state of quiet, rest, and solitude. Therefore, during this time of year, we try to get more sleep and try to get into bed earlier. And I'm going to say, because I live in the U.S., um, <laughs> it, I'm you know, we do daylight savings and I am exhausted by 6 p.m. I'm so tired. So um, I'm just ready to go to like lay down and, and, and go to bed. You know, it's already dark outside and I, I try to do dinner early and I'm really just trying to lay down by six. It does say here also that um, the sleep is one of the best Chinese medicinal prescriptions for supplementing the chi and it is said to also strengthen your kidneys so this time of year of course it's a water dominant time of year and the water also represents the kidneys so it can impact your kidneys in that way so apparently one of the ways to help fix that also is to get plenty of rest Another thing we can do, of course, this probably won't be great for the kidneys if you're having kidney issues, but it says here that medicated wines are a long tradition in Chinese medicine, and they're a cost-effective way to uh, get a good dose of herbs. You know, it says the alcohol itself is a preservative to stretch shelf life of medicinal products. And so not necessarily alcohol, but it does kind of more speak to the herbal side of things. And it says here, since alcohol is warm and sweet by nature, it has the ability to warm and expel the cold. And I think we all know that, you know, drink a warm, uh, a glass of uh, alcohol does warm the belly. You know, you can just feel that warmth going all the way down. And uh, here it does say that um, there's some different ways uh, using grain alcohol and letting it sit for a month in the herb, I suppose. And then taking a small shot glass of it in the evening uh, with certain herbs is supposed to be a supplemental effect for the kidneys and have that gain warming energy. Um, so I suppose if there's any sort of um, herbal wines or herbal drinks, maybe you could take some of that. I prefer gin because I like uh, the juniper taste. <laughs> so um, I love me a good gin. So I wonder if that would count. And things that can be eaten this time of year to help warm you are uh, lamb, beef, chicken, venison, shrimp, and mussels. In addition to animal products and food, it does say here that it's encouraged to eat walnuts, almonds, nuts, and other warming spices like cinnamon and ginger, which I think is pretty traditional for this time of year. And I would say that even maybe doing a essential oil, you know, could um, also add that to you. I know you need to consume it, but it might also help just to smell it, you know. And of course, it says here it's soups and stews are warming and moistening and root vegetables like yams, turnips, um, 
let's see here, traditional kept in winter storage is usually good for consumption this time of year. And then we come up on the winter solstice and some phenomena, weather phenomena that we see during that time. It says here that earthworms curl up as an animal that stretches with yang energy but contracts with yin energy, the earthworm is still under predominant influence of yin energy and will usually be found curled up underground, which I can attest to because sometimes I'll move my compost bin outside and I'll find them curled up out there. So that's, that's true. Uh, they're already curled up out there. <laughs> Another thing is that antlers will drop from the animals. Here it says the elk antlers usually fall off around this time. And it does say that as for the last part of this, which would be right around the beginning of January, it suggests that the spring and water system gradually return to their active state by the end of the winter solstice. Um, I guess I suppose that's true. We don't really have a, you know, here where I live, we don't see that uh, frozen lakes and frozen waters. So, um, yeah, I'll just leave that there. <laughs> And traditionally eaten around the winter solstice is going to be the dumplings. I know I talked about that last week when we talked about the myth or the, I guess, folklore that your um, ears will fall off if you eat, don't eat dumplings. <laughs> so it says here, uh, they insist that if you don't devour a plate of dumplings on the winter solstice, a horrible frostbite will take your ears away. So um, maybe I need to eat some dumplings here. And it says that there is a special noodle called the winter solstice noodle that's popular among locals. And the old proverb says that every day is a bit longer after you eat a bowl of the winter solstice noodle. Things also traditionally eaten would be rice cake, pumpkin pancakes, and the egg soup, which I, I actually love. And that's a really good breakfast soup with some protein. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's December energy update and all the tips to kind of stay healthy during this time of year. Hopefully everyone's staying healthy and everything. We still have another episode for the month. That's going to be cut short a little bit because I'll be taking an end of season break, the 22nd and the 29th to enjoy the holidays. So um, you guys, hopefully you're feeling Christmassy. Next week is a Christmas or holiday episode and we'll talk all things Christmas, uh, answer some listener questions. So it's kind of a fun episode, just kind of a lighthearted one. So I'll catch you guys next week. And after that will be our end of season break. For a free energy mapping of your floor plan, please check the link in the show notes. To support today's podcast, go to learnfengshui.com Sign up for emails, leave a review, and share with your family and friends.